Hello and welcome to Get Started in the Market. I'm Mandy Dillon. Most of us have a broad idea about the stock market, but the moment it comes down to actually investing in the stock market, some people just freeze. Don't worry. On the show today, we have a comprehensive ready reckoner on how to enter the stock market. Remember the famous saying, time is money? Well, it's certainly true in the context of your investments. The more time you have, the less money you need to set aside every month for meeting your financial goals and vice versa, which is why the sooner you start investing, the higher the probability of your investment value rising. This is true even for your stock market investments. The sooner you invest and the longer you hold on, the higher the probability of your stock market portfolio value rising. Your entry into the stock markets can be through various doors. You can buy the already listed and traded stocks in the market directly. For this, you need to have a broker or a valid DMAT account and we have already covered the process for both on the series. But remember, you should opt for this route only if you're confident about your analysis of the company and its potential growth. The stock market is not a casino to make a quick bet on a stock and it should not be treated as one. You also have the option of investing in IPOs or initial public offerings, FBOs or follow-on public offerings and an OFS or offer for sale. These are investment options through which you can buy new shares that are coming into the markets. When you hear of a company announcing an IPO, it means this is the first time that the shares of the company in question will be open for buying by the public and will then be listed on the stock exchanges. FPO and OFS, on the other hand, is a process by which a company which is already listed on the exchange issues new shares to investors. More details on that ahead on the show. Next are mutual funds where your money is pooled with the money of many other investors to form a common corpus, which is then invested in the stock market and managed by a professionally qualified and certified fund manager. You become a unit holder of the mutual fund. This is one of the most popular and probably the safest way to invest in the stock market for common investors like you and me. You can also knock on the doors of ETFs or exchange traded funds which are basically investment funds that are a marketable security and usually track an index or a commodity. These are traded on the stock exchanges much like stocks and see price changes throughout the day as they are bought and sold. So as a next step, we evaluate both the ETF and mutual fund options with an expert commentator. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Monica Holland, Consulting Editor Mint on Get Started in the Market. Thank you so much for joining us on NDTV today. I'm going to start with a fundamental question. If you're looking to enter the stock market, and there are many who are literally at the edge, wondering what it is, what are the entry points? You can go direct. You can go directly to the market, open a DMAT account, find a broker, or do it yourself, and start buying yourself. It's like uh, going on a long journey. Do you want to sit in your own car, pay for the car, buy it, work out the destination, and then drive yourself? Pay all the tolls, do all the maintenance, take all the risks, and then you drive yourself. So that's one way, you go direct. The other way is to sit in a bus, which is to go through a mutual fund. Okay? The product is called a mutual fund. It's like a bus. You sit as a passenger. Somebody else owns the bus. They do all the maintenance. They pay the tolls. They, you just have to look at the placard on the bus to say where is it going. Okay, so there are different kinds of funds which do different kinds of things. So you just have to choose your bus carefully and then you get a ride. You wake up occasionally to see if the driver is not over speeding, if he's still on track. But that's it. So there are really two ways. Do it yourself or go through mutual funds. Those are wonderfully clear-cut analogies. I mean, you know, I, I don't think I need to ask any for any follow-up explanation, but we know the direct stock market approach, and I'm going to stick with that uh, transport analogy here, the mutual fund approach. Just expand on 
you know, the concept is understood with the bus analogy, and I think it's important to underline that you must keep your eye on the destination, you must know where you want to go, but expand on what it really means to enter, invest, stay invested, evaluate returns in mutual funds. The answer to that will take an hour, but let me try and compress it. Uh, you are part of a larger investor community who is pooling their money and then choosing a fund manager. So essentially what you're doing is you're handing over your money to a fund manager. Now, why does that work? Why does the manager not run away with your money? It is because the market regulator SEBI has put in place very robust rules. So India is one of the best regulated mutual fund markets in the world in terms of transparency, in terms of uh, costs, in terms of uh, portfolio disclosures. So you have a lot of regulatory action. So that there is somebody watching what the bus driver does. There, there are speed governors in the bus. Uh, so there is a, there's, there's an amount of safety which is built in. So as a retail investor, what you're looking for is a mutual fund which matches what you want to do. So I'm constantly throwing the ball back at the investor and saying, look, there are a million products out there. You decide what you want to do. You know, it's not good, good enough to come and say, I want good return, okay? That's like saying, I want good food, but what do you want to eat? You know, what? So let me make this simpler for you. Take me as an example. In my early 40s, with young children and the related needs that it throws up, therefore a requirement for spending, a requirement for contingencies and a requirement to invest today so that I can meet the needs of the future. However, risk aversion plays a big role as well. Use me as an example, Monica, right. and say, what should the principles be for me when I am looking at the options out there, when I'm trying to decide which mutual fund should I opt for? So very quickly, I'll give you a money box mantra, which is to say that you create something called an emergency fund you have in place a cash flow system so that you know where your money is coming in, what is going out. If you have provident fund, then an additional 10 to 15% of savings is good. If you don't have provident fund, then you're saving at least 30, 35% of your income, right? So those are the building blocks. Once you've begun to save, you've got your emergency fund, then you start investing. And you are not thinking in terms of products yet, you're thinking in terms of tenure. Okay. When do I think I will need the money? Okay, a lot of us say we don't want a longer horizon because the money need may come now. So that is the work that you need to do. You know, figure out when will I need it? Will I need it next year? And what do I need it for? You know, so it's a lot of work that we do ourselves. What do you need the money for? It's going to be for your children's education maybe. You need to put a number to it, right? And then if, if your goal, if what you want to do is five to seven years away, then I will recommend a lower risk product. You know, then I will say that be safe with it. And in terms of the product choice in mutual funds, I will say take a mix of a debt fund and a balanced fund. And we'll talk a little bit more about what so is let out me, there. So let me throw those yeah. words at you, those phrases that many investors are hit with. I'm going to use the yeah. word hit with. But I know, I know. I mean, it's much more gentle than that. But SIPs, yeah. systematic investment plan, what is it? Well, it's suddenly become the flavor of the day and I'm happy about it. A systematic investment plan is not a product in itself. It's a way that you board the bus, okay? It's, it's, a, it's a way to onboard the product. Are you going to take the steps? Are you taking a ramp? What are you doing, right? So it is a way that you commit to investing every month. Okay. okay so think of it like a recurring deposit. Without the guarantee, you are setting it up either with your agent or do it yourself. And you're committing to it and saying that every month, 5,000, 10,000, 20, whatever it is, in however many funds, you're committing to invest that amount. So it's a, uh, it's a product, finally, which matches our income flows. So all of us earn monthly incomes. Right. right? We don't have these large lump sum, key, what is the market doing, what are we going to do now, nothing. It's a boring but very good way to invest. Every month, what you have committed goes out of your bank account and goes to work. So within a year, before you know it, you've got a fairly large amount. So everybody that I know who has started an SIP, after a year comes back to me and says, my God, I did not know I could do it. Okay. And that's the huge takeaway, isn't it? But we're continuing with our jargon buster approach right now. And I'm going to say balanced fund. I mean, 
we know what balanced means, but in the context of mutual funds, how do you break it up? So I'm going to break the nice ambiance of social and talk about khichdi. Okay, so you can eat rice, you can eat dal, they can be sep uh, cooked separately and you mix it up in your plate, right? You buy a debt fund, you buy a, an equity fund, two separate products. It sits in a portfolio or you can put the whole thing in the cooker and make khichdi, which is a balanced fund, which means they're investing across asset classes. Asset classes is equity, debt, gold, real estate. The fund itself will split your money. You will put in a thousand. Uh, 600 will go towards equity, 400 towards debt, or uh, 800, 200. Those combinations you can choose from the market. There are funds, balanced funds, where you are getting three asset classes. There's equity, there's debt, there's gold. Okay. So it's pretty much what you want to do. Do you want to go out there and choose out of the plethora of debt funds, equity funds? Or do you want to buy a ready-to-go product? It's already cooked and cling-wrapped and ready for you to eat. It's okay. like that. Okay. So, you know, again, I just wanted to understand, for the benefit of our viewers, the variety of assets that your fund manager could potentially offer up to you. We've covered equity, we've covered debt, we've covered gold, is that the end? Real estate is just on the horizon. It's going to happen very soon. Uh, there are some changes in the market which are happening, but very soon you'll be able to buy real estate through something called a REIT, a Real Estate Investment Trust. So that's all. And when they say, you know, do you want the growth option? What are they referring to? I know there are just so many things. Okay, so it's like this. Uh, when you invest in a market-linked product, markets usually grow over a longer period of time. So you've invested 1,000, the market value has become 2,000. If the fund manager books the profit of 1,000, he will distribute it as your profit. It's called a dividend, but it's really your profit. That's your dividend option. The fund manager can keep it going in the fund. right? So your number of units remain the same, but the price keeps increasing. The net asset value keeps increasing. So you have capital growth. It's like a house which is worth one crore, after five years is worth five crore. Let's, let's say we are in a bull market in the real estate. Or as it grows, you could sell a room now. You could sell a bathroom tomorrow and get that money. You know, so that's your dividend option. If you're selling a bathroom, it's your profit. Right. So growth is for people who have this long horizon, like for your retirement. When you are thinking, you want the growth option because you want a large corpus. You need like five crore when you are 60 and uh, you are only going to put your money in growth. The other reason why I love growth funds is because the current tax laws give you a zero capital gains uh, benefit after 365 days. So you hold your equity fund for a year and after a year there is no tax liability on your profit. You know, I I know that it's not um, a one-size-fits-all, which is why it's an unfair question to ask. But if you had to put some broad advice out there, the do's and don'ts around mutual fund investing, would you? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So as a person who says that I'm very conservative, I don't like risk too much, but I want a little bit of equity exposure. There are products called uh, index funds and exchange-traded funds. Basically, you are tracking the index. Okay. And if you hold long enough, the downside risk is practically zero. Okay, you hold a product for 10 years, you will make money because the Sensex goes up over the long term. All right? So that's your least risk long-term equity product. As you get familiar with mutual fund investing and you want to take a little bit of risk, this risk is called a fund manager risk. Okay. How is your driver going to perform? Is he a good driver? Is he going to speed? Is he going to crash the fund? Is he a, does he know, is he a skilled driver who will get there fast? Okay, so then you're choosing the fund manager. And Indian fund managers have done exceedingly well. So if the benchmark returns has been, say, 15, they have done 25. And this is year on year for like 20 years. So can you imagine a 20% 20, 20 year on year return for 20 years? What does that do to your money? And yet, so, if you ask a retail investor, to think a little bit about the fund manager, they find the task theoretically overwhelming. Correct, which is why there are uh, uh, rules of thumb. So there are two or three listings in the market. We at Mint do something called Mint 50. Uh, we curate out 
50 investment worthy funds, you pick five or six out of that. Some investors I know who are very smart will look at other listings. So Value Research has one, Morningstar has one, Mint 50 is our own listing. I would encourage you to look if the fund passes all the three hoops. Sure. You know, get that. That simple practical, you know, advice that can be easily followed. Exchange traded funds. You refer to that, expand on it. Okay, so I'm going to take a minute and talk about an index. We've all heard of the Sensex. Uh, Sensex is an index of 30 uh, liquid, which means they have a lot of uh, market capitalization. Similar for the Nifty. Nifty, correct. Absolutely, for the Nifty. Nifty 50 is 50 stocks. It's a broader index. Um, what it does is that the, some of the most profitable and large companies are on the Nifty. Right. Uh, when they stop doing so well, they get thrown out, newer companies come. So if you could buy the index, if you could buy the Nifty, then you're always holding good companies. Right. So it's, uh, this is called index investing. Mutual funds have index funds. There is a better product called an exchange traded fund. Think of it like an index fund. A mutual fund which buys all the stocks in the Nifty in the same proportion, except that this exchange traded fund is listed on the, on the markets. Okay. So what you get is a much lower cost. Okay, it's like 20 pesa on 100 rupees, whereas an index fund would be a rupee and a half. Okay, that's the difference. And you get an, a real time market price. So in an index fund, you'll get one price in the day. In an ETF, you get a price real time. Okay, so for uh, retail investors, you would need to open a DMAT account to buy the Nifty, and uh, that's that's a great way to hold the index over the long term. But the embrace of ETFs needs some catalyst. Um, you know, are retail investors, uh, you know, actively looking at ETFs? I don't think they know too much about the ETFs. The only ETF which really caught everyone's fancy was the gold ETF. So the underlying can be anything. It can be gold, it can be government bonds, it can be uh, corporate bonds, it can be equity. And within equity, it could be a mid-cap index, it could be a large-cap index. You can create a million indices. Um, the entry-level investor will go towards something that they can understand, which happened to be the gold ETF. Right. Um, as, the, as the Indian market matures, we will see a shift towards ETFs because the fund manager expertise will no longer be able to get that extra return. But I think we are 10 years away from that. We, are, we still have very smart managers. We still have enough inefficiencies for them to use that to get a higher return. So if one had to do, in a sense, a quick report card on, well, I mean, ETFs are a part of mutual funds, but you know, if you had to take ETFs as a concept, and what retail investors generally view as mutual funds. How does that report card stack up today? It's basically doing the same thing. An exchange traded fund is a mutual fund. Right. But it's a mutual fund with lower costs and a different gate to onboard. Right. Okay, the, uh, you are, you're onboarding it through a DMAT account. You need a broker to onboard. Whereas a mutual fund, you can actually buy it yourself through a robo-advisor. You don't need a DMAT account. So the way you onboard is different. Uh, for the purpose of an entry-level investor, this is enough. Okay. Okay. Monica, you have followed this industry so closely and you understand everything that goes into making it robust, safe, easy to understand. Today on this show, one final word of advice to anyone who's standing at the gate wondering whether or not to onboard. What would you say? Just get in. Just on board, do it slowly, put 5% of your money, see how it feels, take, a, take another year. It is not an all or nothing, one time decision. It is your lifetime of earnings. You have a 30 to 40 year earning horizon. Don't look at this decision as a one time decision. That's all and you have to be in the market. Well, on that note, I'm going to say thank you very much. And I think this has been a fantastic primer to getting started in the market. Thank, thank you. you. We'll be back with Get Started in the Market in a few minutes, so keep watching.